Hi guys, welcome to Wasted Lunch, the perfect place to waste your lunch. I'm Paul McVeigh. Time is 12 o'clock, oven standard. I hope you're having a fantastic day out there, whatever you're doing. <sighs> time to slow it down and have lunch. Mm. <sighs> Got my coffee and my smokes here. Ready to... Uh, pass the time away with you. Now, yesterday I did wasted lunch and then ended up doing a later broadcast. Oh, simply started because I, uh, big excitement happened in my life. We got, finally got, <clears throat> pardon me, a washer. Yeah, yeah, finally took care of that problem. So that's how that started out, but it ended up being a pretty funny, silly time on here. Uh, like I said, a little bit later broadcast, I don't know, around 9 or nine or so last night. And ended up being on there for quite a while, probably an hour or so, uh, having, having some pretty funny conversations. So... If you didn't see that, you might want to check that out. I'm trying to think of what I titled that, what I titled that uh, video now that it's recorded for posterity. Um, I think uh, it says something about uh, my washer and uh, also announcing a product idea, a new product idea I have for a, a ladies' hygienic product I was uh, thinking about marketing and I talk about that too and kind of do some brainstorming with uh, other people who were watching and uh, conversing back and forth on different marketing ideas for it so you might find that interesting too and then we ended up talking about uh, cemeteries and creepy places like that so but it ended up being a pretty fun time last night so that was completely unplanned but uh lots of fun so check that video out too yeah i think i titled it uh my new washer or something like that and um but that's how these things happen sometimes you know you don't you don't really plan for them and and things come together and end up being a lot of fun and that's what i like about it though I'm wasted lunch anyways, is, uh, you know, sometimes I just don't know what we're going to talk about on here. Sometimes I come on here and I've got an idea clearly ahead of time what I want to talk about, and I will talk about something, be that some kind of issue or, or perspective on life. And then other times uh, it just, things would just turn into a conversation about whatever is brought up, and I mean whatever, anything ends up being talked about. That happens a lot too. So, but uh, that's you know that's the fun of it. I I find it enjoyable. My dog is right by my side. I think she's wanting something from me. What's going on, girl? She's looking up at me with those big doggy eyes. What's going on, huh? Uh-oh, I'm thinking she needs to... Do you need to go outside? Do you gotta go potty? Looks like it's time to take the dog out, guys. Well, I guess I'll do that, then. Let's see. Yeah, oh, no. do the dark. Do the dark. Watch out for that. Dolly there. All right, go on, go potty. There she goes, bolting out the door on a squirrel hunt. That's her favorite thing in the world, trying to catch squirrels. Okay. <clears throat> Back in the dark. I'll leave her out there for a few minutes. The big thing is remembering to let her back in. Ah, there we go. All right. That's a big thing, is remembering to get my doggy back in the house. Uh, there we go, adjust the camera, make it a little more comfortable. Uh, 
I'm not too bad about forgetting that the dog's outside, but some people in my household are not very good at remembering that she's out there. Let's see, uh, Sean's with us. What's happening, Sean? How you doing, buddy? How's things? Um, how's this fine Friday? Oh my goodness, it's Friday. Yeah. This is the day that, uh, that most people are waiting for, isn't it? It's Big Friday. Hmm. Now, see, today I should be... Need to go out to the BMV and get my stickers for my car renewed. You guys recall my birthday was uh, a couple weeks back, and I still didn't do that. And did not even think about it until last night. And I'm like, oh gosh. Sean says, great, it's game day. All right. Now, uh, who'd, you, who'd you guys say? They, uh, the Tigers are going to be playing Walnut Ridge. Is that their name? Let's see, Let's see if I remembered anything. Walnut Ridge. Was that their name? It'd be amazing if I get this right. Because you guys told me, uh, you guys told me who we were playing, but that was, oh heck, almost a week ago. I don't know, it was quite a few days ago, so. Okay, Sean says, yep, okay, whoo, yeah, a little pat on the back for myself. I actually remembered it. Wow. Yeah, Walnut Ridge, and uh, I believe that. Uh, that you guys said that they were coming out of Columbus, right? What's up, Nate? What's happening? How's things? Let's see. Nate says, yee-hoo. All right. Yeah, it actually caught me. Man. Mm. Yeah, last night, uh, last night's uh, segment, I ended up being on late. And uh, we were talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, Sean says, yeah, okay, I got it right. Damn, I remember two things right. Jeez. Yeah, last night, Nate ended up being on later on. I was just uh, happy and geeked about having a washer. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nate says, word, hockey, just working as usual, LOL. Man, Nate is uh, very, very very busy guy. All right, Nate Rambod is a uh, YouTuber full-time, uh, eBayer, Etsyer. Uh, he's got, I don't know, oh gosh, Nate, what, three or four channels? I don't know how in the hell you manage it. It's just, he's doing that stuff full-time and and trying to hustle on eBay to make money, you know, that that's that's his job and I don't know how you do it, dude. I don't know how you get sleep, to be honest with you. I I mean, I wonder sometimes are you like hypomanic or something that you can um you know, just go go go. I mean, jeez, dude. Sean said that Nate guy. Yeah. Yeah, I uh I kind of plugged you a couple times here before, so you might have ended up getting a couple new subscribers out of me uh, talking about you, but Nate is seems to be completely tireless. Uh, Nate says, hypomanic, LOL. Yeah, I wonder, you know, <clears throat> I'll go ahead, I'll be, <clears throat> I won't hold back uh, about myself here. I went through a period where... I was like, you know, I guess you'd say hypomanic, and I mean, dude, I just, when I first YouTube something, I went bananas, and I just, I was barely sleeping at all, and I was making video after video of me doing stuff out in my shop, and all kinds of goofy, crazy shit, and video after video, I think I put out, um, I put out several dozen videos in a couple of weeks, and, and I mean 
several dozen. I mean, I was, it was, I, I forget, I, man, I wish I would have kept track of that, but I was just putting out so many videos and getting barely any sleep. It's like, I felt like I had all this energy and couldn't stop. And I think it was that hypomanic shit. I'm serious, you know? I'm, I'm not even joking about it. I was just like... And, you know, I'm, I'm not... I don't use any drugs or anything like that. I was just like... yeah. I mean, I felt on top of the world. And uh, it was weird. It was really weird. Um, but... That's what I think it was. And see, Nate says, <clears throat> totally, man. It's like I'm in a constant haze, LOL. Oh, my gosh. Purple haze all in my brain. Gosh, yeah. I mean, dude, I just, I wonder that, you know, when I see, see uh, your videos and stuff. Because, you know, I put videos on YouTube. Uh, years ago, I used to do some eBay cyber hustling, I guess you call it. I used to do some of that. And, uh, so I know how much time it takes, you know, and I've sold things on eBay and, uh, never as a full-time kind of job or career. So I know how much time it takes to do these things, you know, what's up, Mike, uh, talking to Nate Rambot and, uh, Sean here. But, uh, yeah, I know how much time it takes, you know, just listing stuff and then you got to ship stuff out, which I always thought shipping was a big, uh, PIA. I mean, it was, uh, you know, here I am complaining about trivial things like shipping stuff, but it was, I, I hated shipping the worst out of anything involved in eBaying that that's what I dislike the most is shipping stuff. I don't know why that is, but it all takes time. So I don't know how in the hell Nate does it. I don't know how you do it, dude. You must like sleep like very little, very little. Cause, uh, I mean, you're putting and Nate's putting out these videos guys. If you haven't seen them, uh, that are really damn good. I mean, they're really good. The editing's great, and, and graphics, and, um, and, uh, you got, I mean, what, you have three or four channels, right, dude? You got that Nate guy, that Nate guy, too. What's happening, Tracy? Um, what is the one, Skate Master Nate? Jeez, uh, I don't know how you do it. So what's on the agenda today, guys? Anybody got anything exciting going on today? Uh, it's Friday, right? Unless I'm wrong about something, it's Friday here. So uh, it sounds like Sean is uh, geeked about the game. You guys know me. I'm not. I'm not Mr. Sports. So uh, let's see. Nate says, yeah, three channels. Skate Master Nate, I hardly post on any more, though, just periodically when I get the time. Uh, Sean put, Americans must not watch, LOL. Okay, you're talking about my Americans must not watch video. I forgot all about that video I did. Forgot all about that. So what, you finally just seen that one? Um, you know, I think, guys, it's time for me to try and contact Pavel, too. See, what, see what's been going on with Pavel. I don't know if you guys watched Pavel before, but uh, I think it's just about time that I try and uh, connect with him again. See what's happening with old uh, Pavel. Because it, it, it's been a while since Pavel's uh, put out anything. I think that would be interesting. But, uh, yeah, Friday. Like I said, my big excitement is I sh today, going back to what my big excitement is, is I need to get my ass out to the BMV. I need to get those uh, stickers for my plates. That's always a nice, happy birthday, huh? You got to go to the BMV. Exciting. How about you, Mike? Anything exciting going on with you, dude? 
Let's see. Uh, Sean says you should have him as a guest on Wasted Lunch. LOL. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't know how exactly I'd do that with, you know, having Pavel on the show. Uh, you know, that'd be kind of tough to do. I imagine I could pull it off somehow, but, you know, he'd live so far away. That's a problem. I have to come here from Eastern Europe. But, uh... Yeah, Nate, you might want to check out the video I did last night about the washer. Some of it was really good. I talked about a, a product I was uh, thinking of inventing and just started brainstorming with uh, folks on on uh, Facebook Live about it. So, uh, let's see. Nate says, dude, go to the one on Whipple. The lines are always tolerable and sometimes non-existent, and the people are a lot nicer than Maslin, oh, LOL. Okay, the one on Whipple. Dude, I'm trying to even think of where the heck it's at. I have never been to the BMV on Whipple. Wow. Huh, I'm gonna have to, well, I got, you know, I got the Google map thing. I can look it up, yeah. Thanks for the suggestion. I might check into that. I don't know if I'll go there because the, the vehicle I have to drive is the one where the, oh my gosh, the brakes are, are let's just say most people would not drive the car. Okay. Let's see. Nate says, yeah, it's across from Acme, kind of hidden in a little shopping center. Okay. Well, I know where Acme is. And I know there's a little strip thing across from there because I used to go to a store right across from there, which was uh, uh, the Briar Patch. It's a uh, tobacco. They got pipes and cigars and stuff like that. I used to go there all the time for pipes and pipe tobacco. So I'm guessing where you're talking about is somewhere nestled in that little little strip thing, plaza, thingamajig, so, thanks for pointing that out, but like I said, I don't know if I should even drive that far, this car I'm driving, so you got two cars, we got the van, the brakes work fine in it, okay, but then we have this Camry, and it is, the brakes are scary, we'll put it that way, uh, Nate says, yeah, I think that's it, um, <clears throat> yeah, but, I'll tell you, the Maslin one does, it has, when you said that people were nicer at the one on Whipple, the Maslin one does have a girl who is just, like, gives me this look every time I'm there, like, you're wasting my time. Uh, there's, I don't know, she's a brunette and uh, skinny lady, and she's just, like, very bitter and you know unhappy every every time I go there and I wonder I wonder about people like that like why, why the hell do you have that job you know where you're talking to strangers all day and you can't stand people I I wonder that and then I think you know these people already hate people and then they're doing a job where they interact with everybody all day so then they probably hate people more because they're forced to do what they hate the most, and that's interact with people. So, you know, I always wondered about that stuff. Like, why would you get a job like that if you hate people? Nate says, exactly. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me. And if, if you hate people that much, get the hell out of there. Don't do the job because, you know, I mean, let's face it, you, the people coming to you don't appreciate you either when you're a jackass to them, you know. I, I just, I don't understand. Life's too short, you know, you know what I mean? Life is too short, I think, to have that mindset. Um, I don't know. I like people. I like people. Um, try to be good to people. As much as possible because, you know, life is too damn short. And there's so many interesting, awesome people, you know. And I just, 
I don't know. I guess that's why I like getting on here and, and running my mouth, you know. It's fun. I like hearing other people's opinions about things. I enjoy that. I think it's, uh, I think something got in my damn coffee is what I think happened. What the hell is that? What was that? What the hell? I don't know what that was. Maybe it was a cigarette ash. I, I'm going to pretend that was a cigarette ash that got in my coffee. And, uh, speaking of cigarette ash, here I go. Time to chain up. Hmm. Yeah, BMV's never been fun, you know. And and I'm stu I'm I, I do goofy shit like uh, going to the wrong part of the BMV, like going to the license plate place when I need to be in the other room. And what's up, Bill? What's happening? What's the excitement? Bill Johnson's on here now. Let's see. Sean says, uh, Paul, you still drinking that pumpkin spice? No, I am not drinking pumpkin spice right now. Which, uh, Nate would appreciate that. I was drinking, I went out on a limb the other day and, and tried some pumpkin spice and it was pretty good. I don't like to admit it, but I did. I'm not that macho, I'll admit it. It was good. Bill says, what up, Paul? Um, you're looking at it, buddy. Sitting here jaw jacking with you fine folks. Um, let's see, Bill says, uh, enjoying my last on my vacation. Oh, last day of vacation, eh? Well, I hope you're having a fantastic vacation. I hope you're relaxing and taking it easy and, you know, doing what pleases you the most. Yeah, I had the pumpkin spice. Got one of those Keurig things, you know. You take the K-cups, they call them, and you put it in. We were down to uh, Christmas cookie flavor and pumpkin spice. So I tried the pumpkin spice and, uh, and and tried it out while I was on here, and it was it was it was different. I couldn't drink it all the time, but it, it it's you know a nice treat. Sean said my eyes are playing tricks on me. I thought I typed space instead of spice. Scared me for a second. Yeah, it would scare you because you know Sean knows that I will read stuff verbatim. I will read it exactly as it looks, and people will do typos, and sometimes funny shit comes out. Bill says, you still live in oh my, OMG on 17th Street. Well, um, no, not living on 17th Street now. Now I moved kind of out into the country. Oh, no, now Bill, Bill tried to straighten it up, and now he says still livening on 17th Street. Yeah, you got to watch me. I'll read exactly what you put on there. Uh, no, I'm not livening there or living there anymore. Uh, moved out of the big city of Maslin, and now I'm living in between Navarre and Brewster, which is cool. It's cool. It's different. It's not like I'm really in the country, though. It's weird because I am in the country, but it's it's like a suburban neighborhood just glued into the country. Bill put GD phone. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you got that uh, autocorrect stuff. Everybody hates it. Yeah, the one day Sean was on here, and he was talking about how he was snorting laundry. I, I think he meant sorting laundry, but then I accused him of sniffing people's boxers in his household because he accidentally put snorting laundry. Sean, you remember that. I gave you hell over that. That, uh, that ended up going on for a pretty good thread. Then we all took turns jabbing at you about snorting laundry that was a good one uh, I can't remember there's been some really good ones so uh, as much as I hate spell check it's funny because it will put in some goofy stuff and people end up putting it on Facebook live and and it creates something and we end up running with it oh my gosh Ah, uh, wow. Sean says, uh, some people got auto-correct. We got Paul correct. Yeah, I am. I I don't know. That's just always been something about me. I look at things, see they're misspelled, and, you know, um, I'm not anal about it, but I noticed that. You know, just like I notice when pictures aren't level, things like that, I always notice when something's a little bit off. 
Bill says, remember in the woods behind your house, drink a beer with Gary. Yes, I do. I remember doing that quite a bit. Um, uh, yeah, we used to get a hold of the brew and, and run off and have fun back in the days, the good old days. Remember that? Swiping your parents' beer. Well, I couldn't. My, my parents didn't drink, so, but I remember that back in the days. It's funny because as much goofy stuff as we used to do, as I used to do, I got in very little trouble as a teenager. I didn't get in trouble a whole lot. And did some goofy shit, but didn't get in a whole lot of trouble. Um, I don't know. I guess it was, I don't know. I look back and, and I'm thinking, you know, there were so many opportunities. I, we weren't bad kids. I wasn't a bad kid, but I was doing, you know, stuff you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to be getting drunk when you're 14, 15 years old. But, you know, that happens, I guess. Nate remembers the good old days, right? Oh, man. Sean, Sean doesn't know anything about that. He's he's 19. Sean says, like, kicking a cannonball. Okay, you got to bring up me kicking a cannonball again, huh? Yeah, I kicked a cannonball. It felt great. Well, I wasn't drinking when I kicked that cannonball, just to let you know. You know, I was, uh, we were setting off fireworks, uh, Let's see, Nate says, uh, one of my favorite Paul stories is when unnamed accomplice stole the cigarettes from the drugstore by Food for Less and you got confronted as he ran away, LOL. I ain't got no cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was nice. I remember that, dude. And I didn't, I didn't steal from there. Uh, but yeah, my buddy took off and, and left me and I'm like, I ain't be got some shit. I ain't got no cigarettes. <laughs> I like how you spelled it. Uh, stuff like that. And, you know, that's another part where I lucked out, too, is I lucked out that I didn't get in much trouble, even considering some of the people I hung out with. Um, some of the people I hung out with did a lot of crazy shit. Nate just put a whole bunch of sideways smiley or laughy guys on there. Sean says, hey, Paul, who was with you when you kicked the cannonball? Okay. Uh, that was uh, John Von Weil. That was my cousin. And uh, Greg. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. How can I forget his last name? I've only known him forever. Um, and my, my cousin John's best buddy, Greg Cooper. My gosh. Getting old here, guys. That last birthday took away more of my memory. Yeah, that was uh, me, John, and Greg who was there. And, uh, yeah, that was bad. I paid the price for lighting those fireworks. But, you know, my cousin didn't. Greg didn't. Neither one of those guys kicked a cannonball that day. But I sure as hell did. Jeez. You know, I don't know. I don't know what that was for, that punishment, but I don't know. But, yeah, I had friends that did some real goofy shit, and I, I lucked out that I didn't end up getting in trouble for something somebody else did. Uh, of course, there was one time when Scott hid his cigarettes in my dresser drawer and did not tell me about it until we were at school. He hit a pack of smokes in my dresser and then told me the next day while we were at school. And I got home and there's a pack of cigarettes on the table and my parents are asking me, you know, or telling me that they found these smokes. And of course, I tell them what seems like the oldest excuse in the book, they're not mine. You know, which they did not believe, even though it was true. Even though it was true, they were not my cigarettes. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was real nice of Scott to hide his, his cigarettes in, in my dresser drawer. That, that was great. I think I got beat for that one, too. I, I think that's the time I got yelled at for smoking by my dad. He, he's, he's puffing on a cigarette yelling at me about smoking, I think. I think, if I recall right. You know, what are you doing, you know? I don't want to talk bad about my dad. He was a great guy, but that's how I remember it. Maybe that's not exactly how it happened, but it has been years. But I seem to remember getting yelled at about smoking whilst my dad was smoking. That's how I recall it. But, uh, you know, cigarettes. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Sean says, how old were you? Um... See, I think I was still in elementary, so I'm guessing I was about 12. I'm guessing I was about 12 years old when I got busted for the smokes. Yeah. Yeah, I got busted for Scott cigarettes. <clears throat> That's true. They were not mine. I swear it. But, uh, you guys ever get accused of doing something you didn't do? Man. I didn't even get to keep the cigarettes either. That, that sucked. Of course, then, you know, back then, uh, it was nothing for us to buy cigarettes for my dad. See, we would take, we'd take the glass pop bottles down to the corner store. And we would, you know, get the uh, deposit money on those bottles. And then we would use it for candy. And my dad would give us a couple extra dollars and say, you know, pick me up a pack of smokes or whatever. And so um, we would go down there and end up buying my dad smokes. No big deal, you know. People there, they knew my dad. They knew us kids. They knew we were buying the smokes for my dad, you know. Um, let's see, Sean says, did your parents ever find out they weren't yours? Um... You know, eventually, as I got older, I told them again about it and, and, you know, got the point across that they really weren't my cigarettes and then my parents believed me. But uh, they weren't buying that for one minute uh, at the time, you know, when I was that young. You know, they figured I was lying, trying to get myself out of trouble. Because that, that's the oldest excuse in the book. They're not mine. So this just happened to be that they weren't mine. But yeah, <clears throat> getting cigarettes really wasn't that hard if you had the money. And, you know, I don't know why the store didn't catch on, though, because my dad smoked Winston 100s, right? You know, a premium cigarette. And we would go down there with less money than it took to buy Winston's and buy some crap cigarettes like Doral. I don't even know how you pronounce it. Doral, Doral, whatever. We used to call them draws, um, and get these cheap-ass cigarettes. I don't know why the store didn't catch on that, you know, these kids are buying them for themselves. They're getting these cheap-ass cigarettes, but that's what we do. Um, and so, you know, but after I got caught with cigarettes, then my parents told them at the store, do not let the kids pick up smokes for Dad, so... That ended that avenue for getting a hold of smokes. So then uh, we had to come up with another way of procuring cigarettes. So we ended up going way the hell out of the neighborhood uh, over to a gas station that was on, I think, 6th Street uh, is the name of the road, over by the Heights. I think it was 6th. Um, I think it was Herman Ray's gas station. I don't know if you guys remember that. Well, Sean, you wouldn't remember that shit. That was before your days. I think it was Herman Ray's gas station. They had a cigarette machine. We would traipse all the way over there. I don't know how far it is. Um, it's over a mile from uh, my old house. We, we would go all the way over there and buy cigarettes out of the machine. I remember doing that. So, and then, you know, well, once we got a little older, then we could have my older sister buy them for us. 
Nate said, uh, Dan Stanley got me busted at Mayflower for tra for trying to, see, I'll read that stuff as it says it, for trying to steal cigarettes for him, LOL. I had them and left them on the newspapers at the end of the counter. Uh, let's see, I gotta hit the see more button. Um, left them at, uh, at the end of the counter because the freckle-faced checkout girl saw me take them. We left, and he had to go back later to get something, and he was confronted. Even though I didn't even take them, I got in some serious crap for that one, lol. I remember his dad calling my dad, and all hell broke loose. Wow. Nice. So, Dan got you busted for trying to steal cigarettes for him. Oh, wow. Nice. Jeez, I'll bet you hated that freckle face girl. Wow. So you tried to take them, and you left them there because she saw you. And then he went back later to get something else and got, wow, got confronted about it. But you guys didn't even take them. Oh, my gosh. That sucks. Wow. Did you guys, uh, did you get an ass whooping? We've talked about that so many times on here. I don't know. I grew up in a house where whoopings happen. The house where whooping dwells. Um, yeah. And see, Nate says, I'll never forget that girl's face. Damn liar. She probably picked them up and kept them and blamed me. LOL. Yeah. Those damn skaters took up. Nice. What a jerk face. I'll never forget that girl's face. <laughs> damn liar. Oh, gosh. That's funny. That's funny because, you know, you don't usually get that pissed off about much stuff. So, or, or outwardly get that pissed off, you know, don't get to see you too much like that on your videos, and don't see you much in person, so it's funny hearing you say that shit, uh, yeah, you have nightmares about this freckle-faced bitch getting you in trouble, wow, I wonder where she is today, getting other people in trouble, and Nate says, so hilarious, <gasps> Oh, it is. And it's funny because it's funny now, but back when you were kidding, this shit was happening, you know, I mean, and I don't know how scary your dad is or was when you were a kid, but oh my gosh, dude, my dad was so scary that it was like, you never, you never thought someday I'll laugh at this. You, you know, that thought never crossed my mind you know, ever, I mean, um, um, you know, when I got in trouble, it's like, I've got this huge dude with a big black beard, red faced with these big ham fists, you know, and it's like, and this guy is pissed at me, you know, it's like, I've seen this guy pick up car motors and he's pissed at me. And it's like, now the thought that you'll laugh someday Never crossed my mind when I got in trouble. It was like, you're dead. You're going to die. You know? John says that was a good wasted dinner last night. Yeah, it was. It was It was funny. Yeah, last night I, I got on here. I just, there was no intention of anything besides just showing you guys that I was happy that we finally got a clothes washer. That was the whole reason I got on. And then we started. Started talk, you know, I started talking about that feminine hygiene product I was thinking about inventing, you know, um, and then it turned into something totally wacky and weird, and uh, so we uh, we were talking about the washer last night. Then it went on to my uh, my feminine hygiene product, and then ended up talking about cemeteries. Sean says flapstick. Yeah, flapstick was the uh, feminine product I was thinking about coming out with Nate. If you were wondering what the hell we're talking about, um, it's 
Yeah, I was talking about it being for ladies. A lip balm. Uh, let's see. Nate says, shit, dude, I'm having a blast, but I got a roll, man. I have to edit before I take off today, and I have to close all other media or my editor freezes up. Well, dude, all right, you, you be good, and have a good time. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for hopping on here. I watched uh, the, the morning video. I thought it was really cool that you were talking about, you know, YouTube channels and and having to really love what you're doing. So thanks for putting that video up. Later on, Nate, be cool, brother. Um, and we'll holler at you later, dude. Yeah. Flapstick. Yeah. Yeah. It might catch on. Watch somebody steal my idea. Sean says, bye, Nate. Nate says, have fun, bro. I definitely got to hear about Flapstick later. <laughs> Yeah, the video's up there for posteriority um, on Facebook. And I'm uploading them all on YouTube. So later on, dude. Um, uh, speaking of, uh, Sean, did you, you ended up checking out his channel, didn't you? Did you end up checking out one of his channels? So, Sean, you, you feel like going live at all? Let me see what time we got. I got about 20 minutes. Uh, Sean, you feel like going live at all? Let me know. Do you, you got your makeup on as your hair did? Anything like that? I'd like to pull you on live if you want to. Uh, Sean says, did that video get a warning? Yes, it did. I put grown-ups only, please. Okay, so, yeah. It's got a warning on it ahead of time. I think there's a couple videos, so... I think there's a couple talks we had before that I might have screwed up and not put a parental warning on them. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, okay, Sean says, yes, I watched his channel. Yeah, he's got good stuff, and Nate puts a lot of time into him. You know, I mean, he edits his videos. He, he uh edits them for, uh, you know, to keep them, a lot of his videos to keep short and sweet and interesting, and which is the opposite of what I do. We talk and we talk, you know, I mean, that's, that's kind of how we do it here. It's, uh, but he edits them, lays in music and, and cool graphics and really does a class A job on his videos. And in fact, uh, I've, I've even told Nate that he's got a show that he's got Nate in the morning. And that has become a part of my daily routine is watching that show every morning. Because 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, it's a very positive show. And I say point because sometimes Nate has some stuff going on in his life that isn't so, um, you know, you, you get to see some of the trials and tribulations Nate's going to sometimes, and, and you're like, oh, man, I feel bad for what's going on right now. But almost always, though, it's positive stuff. You know, even when even when stuff's not going great for him, he's still positive. So I guess really 100% of it is positive. So I watch that show every morning. I wake up, and, and when I'm drinking my coffee in the morning, I watch his show. And that is, it's become part of my routine. So, uh, you know, I like it enough to that point. So, um, it's just good stuff. Uh, let's see, uh, Sean says, if it has an adult warning, it usually has something to do with Jonah or I. You know what? I think you're right. I'm not going to argue with you. I think you're right. It, now that you point that out... I'm pretty sure since I started putting warnings on here, I think the first video I ever, ever put a warning on, I think you and Jonah both were on that one. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. You got a point there. What is it? You guys are horrible. Is that it? Is that where you're getting at? You guys are... are... Well, it is what it is. You know, I mean, it's... Uh... I try not to get 
to, no hell, we talk about what we talk about. That's all there is to it. There's no excuses for it. And I'm not going to make any excuses. You know, people want to watch it. They want to watch it. And that's, that's how it is. You know, that's why, I, you know, you see my crazy titles for the videos, at least on Facebook, because I can make the title huge on Facebook. So sometimes I will list every damn topic we talk about right in the title, you know. So and I put that there so that you know people can be like, okay, well this doesn't really have anything I want to hear about, so I can skip this one, or oh, I like that subject, I'll listen to it. Um, Sean says, uh, "quote How do how do stop a bulldog from masturbating?" Unquote. Like, WTH, who comes up with that? Yeah, well, and the answer who comes up with that would be Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, which I thought that was a pretty good joke. But, yeah, that definitely put it into the adult realm category, which just me even reading your quote now puts this video in the adult warning category, doesn't it? See, just that quick. Just that quick, and it's already grown-up material only. So, um, but I try and put the warnings on there, you know. But I think there's a couple I may have forgotten to do that with. So, but, uh, you know, I don't know what the heck we're going to, you know, what's going to be said or anything like that. I you know, we start talking about stuff, and the topics change, and, and and somebody puts in something crazy, and then here we are, you know. Uh, Sean says, or when Jonah brought up that time my cat was almost a part of our truth or dare nonsense. Yeah, that was totally disgusting. Totally disgusting. Um, that was nasty. Oh, my gosh. That was nasty. That was disgusting, but, you know, what did I expect? I'm talking to you young guys about playing truth or dare. Did I expect that you guys would be, you know, playing pin the tail on the donkey? No. No, I didn't. But uh, when we did that and you guys were talking about what you were daring each other with, I just, oh, my gosh, it, it brought me back to being young and thinking, wow, what kind of crazy shit did we dare each other to do back when I was a kid? Um, and then it remind it also reminded me of why I didn't like to take part in that game as a kid, you know, as a teenager, as an adult. Um, I'm like, nah, I'll pass on the truth or dare, or we'll try truth. You know, I'm pretty good with truth. Um, even though there are some true things that, you know, are pretty crazy, I guess. You know, but what's crazy? It's an opinion. Uh, you know, what's normal? You tell me. But, uh, yeah, that was a crazy one. That was fun, though. That was fun hearing what you maniacs came up with. Oh, man. See, Sean, you get old, and, and then your big excitement for the day is, is going to the BMV and crap like that. Let's see, uh, Sean says, man, at first I had a sore throat, and that went away. Now I have a headache. Man, I can't catch a break. Getting old. Getting old, see. Goes from one ailment to the next. Sore throat. Headache. You know. But these things are all very treatable. Tylenol. Tylenol, dude. Uh, take your ass some Tylenol. Some headache be gone pills. That's what you need. Um, you know, one thing I haven't been doing lately, and I've been wanting to do is read. I have not been doing much of that lately. Uh, let's see, Sean says, what kinds of stuff was in your truth or dares? Um, let's see, like I said, I didn't play it that much, dude, because, so I can't really remember anything about it because I that was a game that I almost 100% of the time was like nah screw that I ain't playing you know 
Although people would ask me crazy questions, you know, which were usually about me and, and girls when I was a kid, you know, a teenager, uh, for the truth part. And uh, Sean says, hope it had nothing to do with a cat. No, never, never had anything like that, dude. No, never had any dares like that. And like I said, I didn't. That was a game I, I shot down as far as my participation almost always do because I'm like, I ain't going to do something totally disgusting, you know, for kicks. I just, I mean, I did enough goofy shit without being dared to do it, I think, also. So there wasn't much pressure on me to do anything goofy from my friends because I did enough goofy stuff as it was without being dared to in the first place, so. But, uh, whew. yeah, you guys in your truth are dare. That's, and that is a game that's probably always been around. Probably since the words truth and dare existed, that has been a game. And people have probably gotten in trouble for that for hundreds of years, you know. I can, you know, I, I imagine, I can just see... Uh, nutsy ass kids in Victorian times playing truth or dare, you know. I imagine it's been around forever. Uh, but, yeah, people haven't changed. People have always done goofy shit, so I imagine that game's been around. Um, speaking of games, I have a book that was printed in the 1800s that is all about games. It's very interesting, too. Uh, let's see. Sean says, I usually always choose truth. Chose truth because I've seen what I've dared my friends to do, and I know what they would put me through if I chose dare. Yeah, yeah, they'd want to get payback on you. You know, if you're daring them to drink out of people's belly buttons or, or what have you, I mean, they're going to want to get you back. So, yeah, choosing truth is, is a lot easier by all means even though the truth hurts sometimes it's it's yeah um but yeah so i mean if i was forced to play that game at gunpoint or something i'd be choosing truth period i had a really good damn there's a game out there. I can't remember what the hell it is. It's got some really weird-ass name. Zombino or something. I'm not even going to talk about it because I can't even remember the name. I got this little book. If I ever find it, I'm going to read some stuff from it on here. But it's kind of like Truth or Dare. It's got really wacky questions. This book asks you. And you're supposed to answer these really tough questions that are bizarre and off the wall. And uh, you ask somebody that, and then they're supposed to give you an honest answer for these choices you have to make in this book. And, I mean, some of these things, I mean, it, it's an adults-only thing for sure. Uh, Sean says, that, yeah, but usually they wouldn't ask me to damning of questions. Ask you too damning of questions? Is that, um, so they wouldn't be that bad? That they'd really, uh, really embarrass you. Because I would think that's the main thing that your friends would want to ask you. Stuff that would put you out there and really embarrass the hell out of you. I would think that's the main thing your friends would be wanting out of asking you truth or dare questions. You know, trying to get you to admit or confess to things that would embarrass you, you know, things that are very personal, I would think would be the main objective. Uh, Sean says, yeah, it's usually some stupid stuff. Yeah, well, I, I mean, yeah, that game, oh gosh, it, it's, my gosh, I, I, I'll tell you what, that would be an interesting book to publish, is uh, first-hand accounts of just truth or dare games. That would be interesting. To see a book of, of, 
you know, of real life truth or dares that have been made, or, you know, in, in people's first hand accounts, all different people's, you know, from all different slices of life, what, what they and their friends played. Uh, Sean says, well, at least I am odd. Sometimes Jonah hit me hard with those questions, but not always. Um, I, yeah, I could see Jonah. I don't know I am odd, but I could see Jonah hitting you with some tough ones. I really could. I could see him coming up with some witty stuff to ask you and put you in the hot seat. I can very much believe that. But, uh, yeah, you guys, truth or dare, my goodness. Uh, man, Sean, you know what's weird, and it's only you, for some reason, you are always popping on and off um, when I broadcast. It's like your avatar or whatever is up there, and then it disappears, and then it reappears, and disappears, and reappears. You having problems with, like, connection and stuff? Connectivity, I guess you'd say. I just wondered that. Because, yeah, you'll be on there, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, what happened to Sean? Oh, he's back. What happened to him? He's gone. Oh, he's back. So, which, you know what? I think you said something about that yesterday or the other day so maybe I don't even have to ask that question but okay Sean says when my internet cuts out it happens okay well must not be that bad because you're not going that long or anything now when I, it cuts out on me then I have a problem because it's like you know I'm trying to broadcast and now everybody's got to wait I don't like doing that to people uh, Sean says or it cut out for a second to check the time Okay, so you'll check the you'll check the time and then it cuts out. It's amazing what all you can do with these phones. Um, I'm still, although I have had a smartphone for years now, I am still amazed at just the capabilities of these damn phones. Um, you know, I I appreciate what they can do for me. I mean, it's just. Crazy. I mean, to think, you know, I'm talking into one right now. I mean, I, I still remember rotary telephones, you know, where you dialed on the little wheel. I still remember those. So, and I can remember those very clearly. So, uh, so it makes me appreciate what we got going on now. So, uh, Sean says, how's Nala going? Oh my gosh, I got a letter in the house. Thanks for reminding me. I'll be back. Oh my gosh, thanks for reminding me. Oh my gosh. See, I let her out, dude. I let her out and I forgot. I forgot. I ended up getting caught up in jaw jacking and talking and everything and ended up forgetting. <sighs> it's not good, huh? Poor doggy. She's cold now. Even with her little jacket on, she's still cold. Oh man. So you're going to the game. That sounds fun. Let's see, Sean's asking, what kind of dog is she? Okay, we're not 100% sure. Uh, we're guessing she's part pit bull or something, but we're not 100% sure. Um, I don't know. The lady who my wife got her off of said she was, uh, said she was, uh, Part American Bulldog and part, she said her mom was an American Bulldog and her father was a yellow, 100% yellow Labrador mix. 
Yeah, that's what the lady said. A hundred percent yellow lab mix. How how in the hell did you you come up with that? A hundred percent, and it's a mix. Uh, let's see. Sean asked, "Where did you get her from?" Some lady on Craigslist. You know, my wife found a Craigslist uh, posting and had pictures of puppies and stuff, and thought they were cute. And her and the kids actually snuck the dog on me, which I did not appreciate at all. Uh, wow. Yeah, I didn't appreciate that when that happened. But eventually we worked through it. We kept the dog. But I was not happy because I was not consulted and did not thrill me. But now she's part of the family. So, you know, that's, that's how it is now. So, we got a dog now. Up until then, we were just a cat house. Now we're a dog house. Cat house, that doesn't sound good, does it? Uh, but yeah, Craigslist. Craigslist. I think we paid $50 for her. But, uh... So, that, that's, uh, that's what the lady told us, but... From her looks, she looks like she might have some pit bull in her, and who knows what else. Let's see, Sean says, you guys still getting another one? Someday, someday. And I don't know what kind. I don't know, and I don't know if, if uh, I don't know if the next dog, or, or, you know, we get will be a female or male. I haven't, I, you know. I haven't given any thought to it. Now, Teresa's probably given it a hell of a lot more thought than I have. I am content with our one cat, our one dog, and our eight kids. I'm happy there. Um, but I'm sure Teresa's thought about it a hell of a lot more than I have. But, you know, oh, gosh, stretch. Oh, you'd think at this point in the day, with as much coffee as I've had, that <coughs> I wouldn't want to be yawning, and here I am wanting to yawn. But, anyways, oh man, I knew it was that time. Oh, time is 102 oven standard. I've got to go. I've got to make myself get some socks and shoes on and hit that and go to that BMV. Uh, Sean says, remember, Teresa will bite your toes if you don't go through with it. Good point. That's right. She did bite one of my toes, which I could not believe she actually bit my toe. And that was during a show also. I did not, I didn't think she would actually bite my toe. I wouldn't bite my toe. If I could reach my toe, I wouldn't bite it. But she bit my toe. And that was all about the damn dog, wasn't it? So, yeah, I'm going to have to go through with getting a dog, huh? But, yeah, someday, you know, I, I mean, you know, it'll be cool, but I'm not, I'm not in a big hurry to get another dog. I know Teresa will be, you know, she'll be wanting another dog before I do. So, um, and I don't know what kind would be a good one to get. I don't know if we'll just get, you know, a mixed breed doggy or what. See, Sean says, have a good day, Paul. I promise you, ma'am, when I start feeling better, I will be on here live with you. Sounds good, Sean. <clears throat> and I hope you feel better, not just for the sake of hopping on here live. I hope you feel better so that you're feeling better, period. So have a fantastic day, dude. Um, and I wanted to say thanks, even though some of the folks who were on here are not on here any longer aren't still on right now. I wanted to thank those guys for participating. And anybody who watches this, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed sitting around and BSing or listening to us BS. Try and catch a show Monday through Friday, noon-ish. And uh, you can be part of the show. You can holler, holler in your comments and opinions about things. But uh, until then, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in later. Bye.